Did NZXT just create the perfect budget monitor for 2022? And I say that jokingly, but about 10 months ago, NZXT went outside of their norm and they created the capsule. Now, I don't know how much of my channel you've seen in the past, but if you are familiar with my channel, you will know that I, I really love and enjoy white peripherals. I really enjoy, you know, my Sonos Arc and Sonos uh, Beam 2 back there and, you know, my keyboards and, and my desk mats and all those different things. I just think white is a really clean aesthetic. That's why I kind of went out and got this Kraken Z73. Even though it's black on the cover, it's actually the, there it is, it's actually the white version that I'm gonna be updating my, my, um, my desktop over there with. And today, NZXT just announced a monitor that I, I, I did, obviously no one had it on their radar, but it's a monitor, it's a QHD monitor, which isn't even the, the resolution that I prefer, but from a, <laughs> it's gonna sound shallow, but from a design aesthetic, it's perfect. <laughs> and so let's look at it. So we have the Canvas QHD monitors that were announced today by NZXT. QHD 165 hertz gaming monitors, 27 inch variant and a 32 inch curved variant as well. Now the very interesting thing about these, and this is the reason why I'm extremely interested, is you, you can customize the color almost. There's different combinations. There is a black, a black frame, white frame, white base, black base, white arm, black frame, you mix it however you wanna mix it. And so, but what's important is, are they good monitors? And so right now when everybody is talking about QD OLED and OLED monitors and mini LED monitors, they're playing it safe, but they're playing it true because while all the manufacturers are moving away from the standard and moving on to the more, you know, like I said, OLED and mini LED and things like that, NZXT is refilling that gap in the marketplace for the standard, which is what people have gotten used to, which is, you know, VA, you know, uh, regular panels at QHD as opposed to OLED, 4K, 4K, 240 Hertz, you know, Samsung Neo G8. So let's look at this. And so you have, again, you have two different options. You have the Canvas 27Q, and you have the Canvas 32Q curved. Now, the pricing for these is what's phenomenal. $359.99 for the 27 inch, $429.99 for the 32 inch curved QHD 32 inch. And I, we don't, I don't know yet. Like, are, is this expensive for the specs? I don't know. But when we're talking about an average monitor costing on the cheap side now, $700, like it's, it's refreshing to see a brand new monitor come out and be in a $300, $400 range. I mean, we're talking about just the, you know, the Samsung M8 smart monitor, which wasn't really isn't like for gaming or anything like that, but it's $800, you know? And so again, big win for this. And so let's go down and look at the different options. They also came out and released a monitor arm and a dual monitor arm as well, in case you want to mount these together, in case you want to mount these together. But let's go ahead and look at the 27 inch. And so look at the, like the aesthetic, it's, it's almost like a three-sided bezel-less display. And again, you have your different variants. And so look at the, I mean, just look at the all black, black frame, white, white uh, stand, white stand, all black, and let's click on some of the pictures there. You can kind of see some of the arrangements, the, the different uh, settings that you can get. I mean, the whole design is just nice and sharp. Clean, it's clean aesthetically. Um, and then from there, there's the 32 inch curved version as well. Uh, but let's go down to some of the specs, right? Let's talk, let's take a look at the tech specs. And so right now we're looking at the 32 inch. So 31 and a half inches. It's a VA panel, again, 2560 by 1440. It's a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Um, it's the DisplayPort 1.2, but again, this is QHD, and so you don't need 1.4, you don't definitely don't need 2.0 for that. HDMI, again, it's QHD, so you only have your 2.0. Um, there's a USB uh, dock there, type A, 3.0 by two. USB-C, uh, DisplayPort, Alt, so you can do both DisplayPort, USB-C and that. Uh, it's a 1500R curve, and so it's not like you're 
kind of 1800 curve, which is kind of standard, and it's not your extra, extra, you know, above and beyond, you know, thousand curve like the Samsung uh, G8, but it's a 1500 curve there. Uh, sRGB 99% doesn't, it's HDR10, doesn't go into any, you know, any details around the HDR, but HDR10 is kind of like the standard right now for, for your gaming monitors. Uh, FreeSync Premium and G-Sync compatible. So it's not G-Sync certified, but if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, it should still run on this uh, particular uh, monitor. Display colors is right at 16.7 million. So that would make this, I believe, an 8-bit panel, not a 10-bit panel. 300 candelier brightness, um, viewing angles at 178 degrees. Again, it's a VA monitor, so you expect it to have kind of those slim viewing angles. Um, and then a contrast ratio of 1,000 to one. So again, they went with safe, budget, friendly specs on this. And so, interesting. So the 27 inch is an IPS panel as opposed to the VA panel, three year warranty. And so pretty basic specs, but again, I don't know if any of you ever buy anything just for aesthetic purposes. I do, <laughs> and uh, what this reminds me of is kind of like that Sam's, uh, kind of like that LG 32-inch um, um, Quad HD uh, monitor, and I'll, I'll list it somewhere on the screen or in the description box below um, that I had sent out to me on accident by Best Buy not too long ago when I bought my uh, LG 27GP 950B back there, and so. I don't know, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Have you ever purchased anything specifically for the pure aesthetics, the, the just the pure, how good it looks and not really the functionality? Is $300, $400 too much to buy something for pure aesthetics? And like this monitor looks really, really good to me. And as I think about a future setup that I want to build, especially like I said with my Z78 Kraken and you know things like that, this 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 could be something that I would be interested in and also the NZXT capsule Microphone which came out and people did reviews and they were like, oh, it's kind of so-so, right? Like I would totally rock that just for pure aesthetics alone, right? And so uh, Keeping in mind that unless you're a professional content creator You don't always need a sure sm7b sitting on your desk. So like relax on all that, right? But anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always, stay cozy in that crazy world. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.